Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look and installing the Stealth Hitch on a 2017 Volvo XC90. Now this is going to be available in two different configurations. You can get one with just a two inch receiver or the towing kit which is going to include not only the receiver but also a ball mount and the wiring setup for a seven pole or a four pole. Now this is what your hitch looks like installed and if you're wondering, well there's nothing there. That's kind of the point of the stealth hitch. The great part about these is it allows you to have a completely hidden hitch and only really visible when you're using it. And that's really nice, especially in a car like this that aesthetically is a very clean looking car and having a hitch that lives there all the time when you're not using it, this kind of takes away from that look. So whenever you are ready to hook up your bike rack, cargo carrier, or even tow a trailer, you'll have your receiver ready to pop in and go. Now, if you picked up the tow package, the great part is once you're done using this for your bike rack or cargo carrier, you can simply turn the knob, drop this out, and you'll be able to swap over to your ball mount. Now, if you're wondering what this can tow, it's rated pretty well at 6,000 pounds with this ball mount. Now, it does have a tongue weight rating of 600 pounds, which is also pretty good, and that's gonna carry over to your two inch receiver, so that's gonna include your cargo carriers and bike racks as well. And when you are towing, there are safety chain loops that are pretty hidden. They're tucked back a little bit to still continue that stealth look. And you're able to get your normal hooks on there pretty easily. And your larger clevis style, it's going to be a little bit of more of a struggle. But again, that's kind of the part of the stealth hitch is it does keep it all hidden. It's still able to clasp on there with just a little bit more finesse. Now, if you are towing a trailer, this is going to come with a two inch ball, uh, which is really nice. It's a BMW ball that's rated at 8,000. But again, you're going to adhere to that 6,000. You're also going to want to check the weight rating of what the vehicle is capable of towing and take the lowest of those numbers. Now, if you need to change out to a different ball, you can absolutely pick up another one here at eTrailer, but it is going to come with that two inch. So you're just going to torque that in and you'll be ready to go. Now this is kind of stuck in this rise position, so you're gonna to wanna to measure your trailer to make sure that this is gonna work before hooking up. And from the top of this ball mount to the ground, we're looking at about 16 and a half inches. So something to think about if you are choosing to tow with your stealth hitch on your Volvo, it's gonna be at that height. So just make sure that your trailer is gonna match up to that. Now some other measurements to consider here is measuring from the center of this hitch pin hole. It's about even with the rear fascia. So whatever accessory you have, uh, when you're using it in a folding or stowed up position like your cargo carriers or bike racks, you wanna make sure that it's not gonna make contact with the rear fascia, but having it as far out as it is, you should be okay. Something you just wanna double check before choosing a certain accessory. Now as far as ground clearance goes, from the top of the receiver tube opening to the ground, we're coming in right at about 15 inches. So that's important a note for some of your accessories that may hang down and as you go up and incline those can actually get close to the ground uh, it's a decent amount of uh, clearance here so I don't worry about the hitch but again something to keep in mind when you have those accessories loaded up now you also have a 5 8 hitch pin hole here and that's going to be important for keeping your accessories in place now it does not come with a pin and clip but a lot of your accessories will come with one and if you want to pick up a locking option that way you can lock your accessory in place we have plenty available here at e-trailer now speaking of locking you do have a tumbler here on the side and it comes with two keys and it's easy to know if it's locked or not because it's spring loaded so once it's compressed down and you lock that in place, it's going to hold it in. There's a nice rubber cap, and that way it's going to keep that tumbler clean for the next time that you're ready to use it. And that's going to keep this in place, so that way you can't just twist this and no one's just going to walk away with this. It's also kind of a nice uh, peace of mind knowing that once this is popped in place, you'll be able to lock that and know that it's not going to come out. And when you are done and not using your hitch to maintain that stealth, you'll just unlock it, pull that back. And it comes with this plug and you can just put this in here and that's going to keep any road grime from building up in there and that way when you are ready to put your receiver in it's going to be ready and clean and clear ready to use now as far as your wiring goes we also have the seven pole and this comes with the tow package now you are going to have to get this program from a Volvo dealership before using it but it comes with this seven pole uh, adapter to a four pole so if you have a four pole on your trailer and you're worried that it's not going to work with this no worries you just simply plug this in and you'll still get all the capabilities of your lighting features with your four pole 
Now, if you are wondering if it's gonna work with your kick sensor, the way that this mounts up is right behind the bumper beam, so there's really nothing in the way. So the answer, plain and simple, is going to be yes. Now, as far as the installation goes, some of the stealth hitches can get a little bit trickier as they tend to be on some more luxury vehicles, and the Volvo's no different than any other luxury vehicle, but I will say this one's actually a little bit easier. If you're fairly handy, uh, Volvo's done a really good job of making this car fairly easy to pull apart in a good way, and it just bolts behind your bumper beam, and overall, you really don't need too many specialty tools, and if you are doing the wiring portion of it, it comes with the module, it's pretty well plug and play, it comes with a factory grommet so about I would say maybe three hours if you're doing the full tow package and if you're doing just the hitch you could probably knock it out in about an hour and a half as long as you have someone there to kind of help you pull off the rear bumper shouldn't be too hard to do I'm also going to walk you through every single step to make sure you get yours installed so let's take a look at that now in order for our hitch to be installed we're going to have to remove the rear fascia but there's going to be a few steps before we get to that point and the first one's going to be taking this fender wheel well trim off on both sides and that's going to allow us to get to the hardware behind there now in order to do that you're going to want to be very careful here you don't want to pry too hard and cause any creases so just work your way from the front moving your way towards the back just keeping pressure along each little clip here as you come along it and just pulling straight out you should be able to get this off pretty easily. And if you need to, a plastic trim tool will also be a big help here sometimes just to kind of pry that off. Now with this taken off, we're gonna see that we do have some hardware that we're gonna to need to remove. Now the hardware is gonna be on this fender liner here, so just kind of follow this, and it's gonna be a T25 uh, Torx bit here, so we'll go ahead and get these removed. Just follow your way down until you get all five removed. Now we're going to just repeat the same process on the other side of the vehicle. Now during this whole installation, you're going to want to have a nice safe spot to keep all your hardware. It's going to make it a lot easier when we put everything back on. Now you're going to want to open up your rear hatch and there's going to be rubber bumpers. You're going to see two of them total. We'll go ahead and get these taken out and these should just kind of twist out counterclockwise. You may, there are two flat spots here, so if we need to, we might be able to get a wrench in there if we need to. And it is kind of fighting me a little bit, so I'm gonna grab my wrench, see if we can't get that out. Now, if it is giving trouble, a pair of needle nose can kind of uh, just grip around here, and it's just a quick t quarter turn, and then these come out. So just gonna be careful here not to scratch the paint, but we should be able to get this to rotate. Once you get that loose, you should be able to just quarter turn this, pull this out, and we'll go ahead and do the same on the other side. So now underneath, right where our fascia kind of meets our heat shield, we're gonna have uh, some T25s that we're gonna remove. There's gonna be two on each side, so we'll go ahead and get those taken off. So now we're gonna go back to where we had our hardware and there's gonna be some clips along this black molding here that our fascia is actually attached to. So we're gonna to wanna to pry those out. And I'm using a plastic trim panel tool. Uh, that way we're not marring up our paint. But uh, you just kinda of pry here and we should be able to get these to pop out. I think there's a total of three it looks like. Um, but prying this black part down to get the white tab out Maybe putting a little pressure here, that's also gonna help. So we got that top one. We'll go ahead and get these other two out. And then I'm gonna go ahead and repeat on the other side. Now with this side loose, you're gonna wanna grab an extra set of hands to be able to move the fascia and have a safe place to put it. That way you can rest it without it getting damaged. And having two people is gonna be really nice because it can get a little bit cumbersome and there's probably gonna be an electrical clip that we're gonna to have to separate. So while holding the fascia, we'll have to separate that. So grab your friend now and get ready to pull your fascia off. So just kind of work your way towards the center and you're gonna find some extra clips here. And I do believe the electrical plug is gonna be on the passenger side. So we're gonna to want to uh, be ready to pull that apart. So don't pull the bumper too far out. And sometimes it helps to kind of grab underneath here. And now don't pull too far off because here our plug is. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this separated. Just push this tab in. And 
Now we can set our fascia aside. Now, while we have this off, I'm gonna go ahead and put some painter's tape right here on the edge. And this is just gonna help for when we put our fascia back on, we won't have paint rubbing against paint. So this is just a nice little added measure to make sure that our paint looks good upon reinstallation. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same on the edge of the fascia as well. So now we're gonna to need to remove the nuts for our bumper beam. Now we're gonna be using our bumper beam, so don't put this too far away because our hitch is gonna go up and then this is gonna sandwich there. But as far as the nuts go, we're not gonna be using those so you can get rid of them. And with a 15 millimeter socket, we'll go ahead and get these removed. So going along with the two that are up here, there's one that you're gonna shoot through the impact beam here. So total of six, three on each side. So once you have those removed, you can go ahead and pull the bumper beam off. And as I mentioned, we'll just set this here for now. So now you're gonna to wanna to grab a pair of snips because we need to make some clearance here and it's gonna be pretty easy. We're just gonna cut two little notches here and then we'll bend this back right on this edge. So uh, right about here, we'll cut back. And we'll do this on the other side. And then we're just gonna go ahead and bend this back. So be careful, it can be pretty sharp here. Um, so just make sure you're not catching those raw edges. So now we're gonna go ahead and take our hitch and just line it with those studs. We'll then take our bumper beam and put this back over it. And then we're gonna use the new serrated uh, nuts that come in the kit. So we'll go ahead and get these in place. Now there's also a factory weld nut that's back here that goes into the frame and we're gonna go ahead and use the bolts. We have a lock washer as well as a flat washer. So we'll get that threaded in there as well. And we'll go ahead and do the other side. So I'm gonna go ahead and snug these up. So these three are gonna be the same as the 15. Now that new bolt that we put in is gonna be a 17 and we're gonna to wanna to use a wrench and a socket to kind of get in there. You could probably use a, uh, a ratcheting wrench as well. Um, but we'll tighten these down, not too terribly tight, just to snug it up because we're gonna go back with our torque wrench here shortly. The torque settings aren't terribly high. So just enough to kind of cinch this up. So now I'm just using the torque settings that are in the instruction manual and they're going to be the same for all of them. Now as far as a torque wrench goes, we have them available here at E-Trailer or you can generally rent them at an auto parts store and this is going to be an important step. It's going to make sure that they're not too tight and causing stress on the threads but also that they're tight enough and not going to become loose over time. So now we're gonna get ready to put our receiver block in. And if you're just doing the hitch, it's gonna be pretty simple. You're gonna be taking the bolts and passing them through once you have this lined up here. But if you were doing the towing kit, you're gonna have your bracket that you're gonna be putting your wiring on. And then you also have your safety chain loops. So we're gonna to need to align this up here. And it's gonna get a little bit tricky here because you do have to slide this through. So go ahead and you can slide your safety chain loop through this one. And we're gonna go ahead and just slide this in. And then we'll go ahead and take our wiring bracket as well as our bolts. And this is gonna just pass through all of that. You may have to kind of shimmy it around to kind of get these to all line up. And then before we pass it all the way through to put our nuts on, we'll go ahead and take our safe, other safety chain loop here and we'll just slide that on. And then we're gonna follow it up with our nylon lock nuts. So now we're gonna grab a 15 16 wrench as well as a 15 16 socket. And I'm gonna go ahead and just tighten these down before coming back with our torque wrench. 
Now with the torque wrench, you're gonna to wanna to be on the nut side. That's generally a better way to torque properly. So we'll go through and just refer to your instruction manual for that torque setting. Now, if you aren't doing the tow package, you are ready to put everything back on. Now, there is going to be a little bit of trimming that's required on the fascia, and we'll come back to that a little bit later. But if you have the tow package and you need to do the wiring portion, we're going to start that. So now we're going to need to gain access to our plugs that are going to be over here. We're also going to be routing our wiring out through the passenger side. So in order to get there, we're going to pull our internal cargo tray up and out. And we're really just trying to gain access to this little panel here. So I'm gonna pull this up as well, just to give us a little bit more room. And then we can just push these tabs in and that should allow this to pop out. So go ahead and grab your module because we're gonna be gaining access to the plugs here and they're wrapped up in foam. So you should be able to just kind of either peel off this masking tape here and you can pull the foam back and that's gonna gain you access to your plug as well. We'll just get this off of there. And there's gonna be two plugs, so just make sure that you get the foam off both of them. Once you have that foam off, you'll go ahead and with your module, there's really only two places where these can plug into. So our green one will go into this slot here. And then we have our gray one and that's gonna go into this one here. And that wiring's kinda of tight, so just kinda of Make sure that you're not pulling too hard on that. Now there is gonna be that third plug and that's gonna be on our wiring harness here. And this is gonna feed through the grommet that's on the side. So you can go ahead and just pull this grommet off. You're not gonna be reusing it because there's one that's on your wiring harness here. So that's pretty nice. So we'll go ahead, feed our ground wire and our plug through there. And I'm going to just kind of pull these up through that grommet, just kind of being gentle here until we get that grommet right where it needs to be and we can get that seated in there. And just kind of work that edge in there to where it seats in. So now not a whole lot of room here with that wire attached, but we'll go ahead and take our plug and get this plugged in. Now as far as our ground wire goes, I'm going to be using a factory ground. It's kind of tucked back here. Now you can see it is going to be a little bit tight here because of the air suspension tanks. So just kind of push this plastic out of the way and you should be able to get to it with an extension. So go ahead and run your wiring now to where our mounting bracket is, um, where we're going to put our plug. And to get our plug ready to attach, we're going to go ahead and take out these two screws here. And this just holds our center section in. Once you draw these back enough, you should be able to get this center section out. Uh, so we'll open up our lid and see if that's gonna be enough. Close, may have to take the screws all the way out. And you can kind of just give it a quick bump. And this is what we're looking for. So this is where we're gonna attach our wires to, but we need to feed our wires through here. And there's gonna be a set screw, and this just draws this back to allow those wires to pass in a little bit easier. So once you draw that back, you can go ahead and take your wires and just Pull a decent amount through. It's gonna make it a little bit easier if you have a little extra pulled through. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start making my connections here and then we'll I'll catch back up with you and show you how I did it. And to make your connections, I've already made some of mine, but I wanna show you how I actually made those is you're gonna just strip back a portion of the wiring here. And then you're gonna back out this plate now, as far as the order of them, it's not normal. Uh, in fact, there's little colors embossed on the plastic. You're not gonna wanna follow that. You're gonna wanna use the instruction manual as this is not typical of a normal wiring setup. But uh, we'll go ahead and just back that out. You'll see you have a gap there and you're gonna feed your wires. Just make sure that there's no loose ones hanging out. And you can kinda, if you can get it to kinda curl around that screw, that's awesome. Um, but once you kinda have it, in place, you're gonna to wanna to tighten this down. You don't wanna to get too crazy because you can actually damage the wiring and cause it to be not a super secure connection, but just tight enough to where it's not gonna pull out. Now with all those connections made, I'm gonna just put some dielectric grease and you can coat this up. This is just gonna prevent any moisture from really being able to get to the connectors and breaking it down. So go ahead, you can kinda of goop that all in there.
and then we're going to go ahead and slide this back in now there is only one way that it can go and that notch that we used as reference uh, for putting our wires in is going to be where it slides into so you're going to be looking for that um, and it's going to be on the bottom side here so when you lift this cap it should be dead center there so just kind of pull this through and then we should be able to get that to just go right in and it should be sitting flush kind of in that inner portion so we'll go ahead and we'll get our screws back in place here and that's going to hold that in and i'm going to go ahead and tighten up our set screw and this is just going to hold that wiring in place now something i'm going to do too since this plug does sit vertically i don't want any water not that the water is going to really get in there too much but just added protection i'm going to get some electrical tape and just wrap this around so it's nice and protected so I've gone ahead and attached our bracket to our plug and it's just going to align with those holes and using the hardware that was supplied we'll get those tightened up using that star washer nut. Now as far as mounting up there are two different brackets that you can choose from. This one offsets a little bit. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just use this standard bracket. We also have slots here so once we get this in place you'll be able to kind of adjust it to the angle that you need. And to get this in place we're just going to go ahead take our bolt here and we have a flat washer. So we're going to slide, put our bracket on the outside here, slide that through, and then we'll put our star washer and then follow it up with the nut. And again, now I'm going to just kind of get this snug to where it's not going to back out, but that way we can still adjust the angle exactly where we want it. And with our bracket installed, we pretty much have our wiring in place. So I just kind of went through and cleaned this up. I just routed our wires up and zip tied it along here to keep this out of the way of these vents. And then just made our way down here where there's a hole in the frame that I use and kind of went around the frame here to get our excess wire tucked up. So we'll go ahead, get these all snipped. So now we're gonna take the fuse that was included with our module in the same bag, and we're gonna be getting into our fuse panel that's tucked down here. Uh, to get access to this, there's a tab here. You're gonna just pull back, and this whole cover should come off. You may have to kind of wiggle it out on the back end here, but we're gonna be slotting our fuse in. Now there's gonna be an opening that you'll see right next to this 40 amp in between the blue and the green. We're gonna take our fuse and put that in place. Before we put everything back together, I'm going to go ahead and take our module and you'll see the flat side on the other side of where our plugs were. That's going to sit on top of that fuse box. Now the wire is kind of short, so it's kind of hard to manipulate it into a good spot here, but I think it'll sit just fine there. So in using the included hook and loop here, this is going to be beneficial because if we ever need to gain access to that fuse panel, we can just simply pull this up and still gain access. So I'll go ahead and apply this to the back side here. Then I'm going to just peel this off, make sure we have a nice flat surface, and then we can press this in place. So now that we have this nice and secure, you can go ahead and zip tie up the wires if you choose to, um, but everything should go back in place with no problem. Now with our module on top of the fuse box, unfortunately this is not going to be able to close back up. So it does have enough space here to where we can kind of tuck it on the side of the fuse. Um, so just kind of run that back there and that's going to keep that out of the way to where you can still get your compartment in. So I am going to put my hook and loop on here so it attaches to the side of the fuse box and that way it's not going to be rattling around as we drive. So now we can go ahead, we can get our interior put back together. Um, we are going to have to trim our fascia just a little bit for some clearances before we get that put back on. So I'm going to mark that out and show you where we're going to cut. Now, as trimming the fascia, there's really not a whole lot, but this is really going to open it up for us to be able to get not only our receiver in place, but also to be able to use our lock and our knob. So I've kind of taped this out just to get, give you an idea. You can use a Dremel. I'm going to use an oscillating tool, and it's going to cut right through here. But before we do that, on the driver's side, you're going to see there is some wiring that we don't want to nick. And it does seem like we can just simply kind of unhook it from this and kind of move it out of the way. And that's going to just kind of ensure that we're not going to damage it. So just pay attention to where you're cutting. If you stay along this line, you're, you should be okay. And the rest of this does look pretty good as long as we don't get too hasty with our cutting. <laughs> Thank you. 
So now I'm just going to go back with my file and just kind of clean up some of these burrs. So now, with your extra set of hands, we're ready to put our fascia back on. You're going to want to make sure that you plug this harness back in. That way you don't have to take your fascia back off. So just make sure that snaps in. And then just kind of in that reverse order, you're going to want to make sure that we get this center portion on first. So kind of feed that exhaust through those uh, little baffles there. And then we'll just snap this in and work our way to the outside wheel wells there. Now with everything back in place, you're going to want to go ahead and pull this cap here. This is where your keys are going to be located and we're going to need that for putting in our hitch. Now something else that I did while under here is our heat shield. I just kind of made sure that all the sharp edges were peeled back. That way you're not cutting yourself as you reach up in here and also it's a good time to adjust the way that your wiring uh, or your seven pole goes. That way this opens up clearly. So just any final trimmings that you need to do go right ahead. Now, speaking of that seven pole, you're going to want to test it to make sure it works. But unfortunately, with the Volvo, you do have to take it to the dealership to get programmed. Um, it does have that module, but unfortunately, you're not going to be able to hook up and use your trailer lights until they program it. Now, when it comes to actually putting your hitch in place, you're going to want to pull the rubber cap off. And since you, that you have your keys, you'll be able to unlock that. And that's going to allow us to put our hitch in. So. Just put the key in the tumbler and you should feel it pop out once you turn it. So once that pops out, you can see it's spring loaded. That means that we can get our hitch in. Now we're gonna raise this kind of in the center here and I'm just gonna twist this up. That's gonna pop in place and I'm gonna release that and this should be ready to go. So at this point, if you're going to leave this on here, you can go ahead, push that tumbler in, twist the key, and that's gonna lock it in place. You can put your cap back up so your tumbler doesn't get dirty and you're ready to start using your hitch. Now it's gonna be the same process for your ball mount. Just remember, you're not able to tow a trailer because you're not gonna have that lighting until you get that program. So make sure you take care of that before hooking up to this. Another reminder too, there's a sticker here that says not for towing. That's also because you have this for the tow package. You're not going to want to put a ball mount in here. This is specifically going to be for your cargo carriers or your bike racks. And that was a look and installation of the Stealth Hitch on a 2017 Volvo XC90.